welcome back to the channel. I just rented this brand new Tesla Model Y. It's not the fancy performance version, uh, just kind of the dual motor. I'm taking a road trip to the mountains of West Virginia from Pennsylvania this weekend, a four day getaway. Um, I have a Tesla Model 3 long range and I just was not comfortable taking it uh, so far away with uh, you know all the hills and different bumps and things that I'm gonna be taking for trails. I'm doing a lot of biking this weekend, some hiking and my car's just too low to the ground. Well, I had no idea they were going to give me a Tesla. I rented a little, you know, sedan midsize. Well, anyway, I get there and they're basically like, we don't have any cars that could, uh, accommodate your bike that have the back seats that go down so unfortunately we don't know what to do and I said oh that really sucks I would love to have you know my bike come along with me and she went you know what you just pulled up in a Tesla I think I have a Tesla Model Y brand new uh 6,000 some miles on it it's fully charged would you want to take that and I was like absolutely well who would not want to take that I know how Tesla's work and I thought the only thing I got to figure out is how does the charging work with a rental car I figured all that out it gets charged right to my account through the rental car company and here I am so I'm about what 20 miles uh, since the full charge 20 miles since we were at a hundred percent and I'm at 92 percent right now um, I'm at five kilowatt hours of usage at 267 watt hours per mile, which is not bad at all. I'm going about 65, 70. I've got a decent load in the back, nothing super heavy. Uh, the back seats are all down. It's just me in the car uh, and this beautiful roof, which you know my Model 3 also has, but just incredible uh, how uh, smooth and quiet this car is. And I love being up high. I will say the difference between like four or five, six year old uh, Tesla versus uh, a brand new one with only 6,000 miles on it is substantial. Substantial. I mean, the steering wheel just feels incredible in my hand. Everything is more kind of a matte finish on, you know, the door trim on the center console here. But I kind of want you guys to come along with me on this trip and kind of show you how this thing performs uh, up and down mountains. I'm about 200 miles or so total to go one way, uh, but I'll be doing a lot of driving once I get to West Virginia, and it'll be kind of interesting uh, in a resort area that's very rural and very not set up to handle EVs. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how I do. Um, I'm going to try to charge as much as I can before I go into the no supercharger zone uh, to make sure I go in with a full battery and a full charge. That way I can uh, still get around. So come along with me here as I travel to Parsons, West Virginia from central Pennsylvania in this brand new Tesla Model Y. I am just stoked and uh, I can't wait to see how this thing does. Come on for the ride. as far as numbers and things and all of a sudden I check and it has uh, me getting to the destination with 10% left and I'm like what happened to my supercharger stop where did it go well the car is doing so well as far as efficiency that uh, unbeknownst to me as I was driving it dropped the supercharger stop somewhere in Maryland uh, in Western Maryland and said nope just keep going go ahead and keep moving on to your destination you'll get to your West Virginia cabin with 12% uh, well, being in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia, with 12% battery on an EV, probably not the smartest thing in the world. So I had to go into the screen here and actually add in an extra stop. Uh, I'm sure others have had to do this too. It's not the easiest thing to do on the fly. I almost had to pull over, uh, but I had to basically re-enter my destination, cancel the initial one that had me getting there with 12%, cancel that trip, add in the destination again, and then on top of it, lay over some supercharger stops along the way and then select one and basically force the car to add it to my trip so that I can stop. Otherwise, um, I'd have been SOL when I get to this mountaintop getaway, which would be not fun because I've got lots of fun things with me. So that was kind of an interesting thing. Just be aware if you're traveling in a, in a Tesla, especially a newer one without a lot of battery degradation, um, they're going to be really kind of efficient and the car might you know, get there without having to stop. But you know, if you don't have a charger at your end destination, be aware that you probably should stop juice up and then keep going. All right, that's it for now. Let's see where we are in about 12% when we hit 50% and I'll give you the numbers then. It is just 
so easy to cruise in this thing since this is the based model. Um, you don't really have large rims and therefore the tires are a little bit fatter, a little more cushiony, um, and it's a super quiet ride. Not the prettiest of wheels, mind you, because there are uh, covers, but you sacrifice a little bit of aesthetics for some efficiency and comfort and uh, longevity on the road here. Uh, a little bit longer we'll be in West Virginia. We're passing through Western Maryland right now. I found out on the open roads of Western Maryland, a Kia EV6. Pretty. We're gonna win though, sorry. And I think taking a trip like this for a lot of folks uh, is kind of a headache and maybe makes them worry and anxious. And for all the EV Tesla haters out there, uh, I don't know what you got against these cars. I'm sure, Elon Musk is a little bit crazy, a little bit over the top, and just insane sometimes. I get that. But you can't knock these cars. Tesla's network of chargers is just unmatched and it is second to none. Right now, Tesla brand cars are the only EVs that you can take on road trips pretty much anywhere you want to go without painstakingly uh, planning your trip. All these legacy brands that are just starting their EV lines, they're coming to Tesla to make sure that their cars can be used wherever their customers want to use them. And right now, that's where Tesla is operating. They're all coming to Tesla for all of their uh, on-the-road charging needs. And that should say something. That should mean something. And I think it does. For the folks who just don't like Tesla because they just don't like Tesla and there's quality problems, you're just wrong. So we have reached 50% and we're at 119 miles, 31 kilowatt hours, and about 259 watt hours per mile. So not bad at all. So 119 times two for easy math, 240 miles of estimated total range if I got this thing totally, totally down to zero, which I will not. But yeah, crazy efficiency, but the air on in the car as well. 255, 250 so kilo, uh, watt hours per mile is what I'm averaging. And right now I'm going downhill, so I'm gaining a little bit of that back. Uh, but 120 or miles or so on a half tank, a half charge, I don't hate it. For this uh, larger car, it's bigger than my Model 3. I've got some stuff in the back. I'm going 75, 80 the whole time. I've got the air on. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so getting off the highway here. Uh, so right up here, I believe, is the supercharger. It's at a Sheets gas station, which a lot of superchargers are in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. Let's catch this light here. Here we go. I've obviously never been to this Sheets before or to this charger before. And they're all over there. This is gonna be great. I am really hungry. I also am uh, super thirsty. So only one, there's just another Model Y. Let's pull up at the very end here. Be hopeful this all works because it's not my account. Come on, turn green, turn green, turn green. Uh oh, this is not gonna be good. Ah, let's figure this out. Oh, are we going? We are going. All right, we're climbing, we're climbing. All right, here we go, here we go. 60, 94, 114. It is set right now to 100% charge. I probably won't wait that long to do this, but maybe 90% or something like that. 135, oh, we're kind of peaking already. It's a really pretty Model Y, look at that. Without the crazy things on my glass. All right, 25 minutes or so, charge up, 
get something to eat inside, something to drink. See y'all in a second. All right, the pretty Model Y is leaving. Let's go check it all out. So decent uh, space here for all these stalls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stalls, one there for a trailer. The only thing that sucks about this LaVale Maryland Charger Supercharger is this post is teeming with bees. Uh, there's a little hive or something done in there. And they're all over the place. So when I went back here to charge my car and plug it in, um, it was not great. They kind of attacked my hand. Didn't get stung, but uh, definitely sends you for a little bit of a scare if you're not expecting a bunch of bees to be back there. See, they're all crawling in and out. Let's see. Of course, now they're not doing it. Yeah, but they're in there. There they go. Yeah, see? Ah, it's gross. Don't like it. See, if you're bee averse, be careful of these. Anyway, let's see where we're at with charging. This seems to be charging really slow. I don't know what's going on. 15 minutes left to get to 90% up from 35%. And we're at 58 kilowatts right now. I think we peaked at like 138 or 137. So this must be just either uh, my battery wasn't warmed up enough. Um, the car's still so new. I don't know. Or I'm just used to my Tesla Model 3 charging differently, uh, charging differently than this uh, Model Y. So uh, not a big complaint really. Uh, just taking a little bit longer than I expected it to. Let's see what the cost is right now. Let's see. We're at nine bucks and 48 cents, 40 cents a kilowatt hour, not horrible. Um, yeah, gonna charge her up and uh, get back on the road here shortly. All right, after about 25 minutes, about 10 minutes too long in my opinion, uh, we're at 90%, about 16 bucks to uh, fill up here to 90% from 35. So not horrendous, but could be faster to me. This was a V2 station now that I uh, did some research and looking into it. So maybe that's what I was uh, surprised by. All right, back on the road here, uh, getting to my destination right around six o'clock tonight, about four hours total with charging included. So I made great time, even though I had to build in some extra time uh, on top of uh, what I initially planned. I thought about 20 minutes or so at very most for restrooms, gas, or electric uh, and everything else, uh, but still gonna make it in about four hours and 10 minutes. So not horrible for a 200 mile some journey. So I can't complain too much. the highway uh, getting back to the main road I'm not sure what I did but I got kind of lost because I didn't follow what the car was telling me after we charged up so I'm kind of in the middle of um, nowhere Ville um, where I'm not sure folks here truly have ever seen an electric car let alone um, have the capacity to charge one so this should be interesting I'm gonna be out of here in about eight miles but um, but right now, I'm just glad I've got a full charge almost and uh, I can get back to some sort of civilization. Again, beautiful here, not dogging it, but just not the EV kind of crowd, I don't think. So I am 33 miles post charging uh, in LaVale, Maryland. I've used 11 kilowatt hours and I'm getting about 336 watt hours per mile. Uh, so there were some hills involved in all of that, but my efficiency has really gone downhill, uh, opposite of those hills. It's gone downhill since I charged last. My overall trip uh, efficiency is at about 275 watt hours per mile. So that's still really good average wise, but my current since uh, charge rate it's not all that great. Um, I'm not sure if that's just, you know, because those hills were worse than I thought, but not loving that. Another thing I'm noticing on this long drive with this Model Y is that the air conditioning is really, really not strong until you hit about five or six on the settings. So one, two, three, and four setting, you can barely feel it no matter where you move it on your screen, up, down, to the side, combine the two flows. It doesn't really do anything. I was like dying of like heat thinking I've got it at five. Where the hell is the air? 
well, uh, put it at six and I can finally feel it blowing in the right area. Um, so maybe that is what's uh, messing up my efficiency as well. But uh, I just could not get it to blow on me in the, uh, I guess, right places and at the right speed and right rate. Uh, a little bit confusing and kind of frustrating to be honest. <laughs> Virginia, 55 miles an hour on this uh, cliffside road with passing ability on each side about, you know, 100 feet ago. Just insane. This would be a 35 mile an hour road maximum. Look at this. Around the bend, 50 miles an hour. This is just crazy. Look at that view. Ah! This car is so fun to drive through this. It is nimble. It is accurate. The wheels go exactly where I point them. It's just incredible. And I'm climbing up a little bit higher here without any problem at all. Look at that out there. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. A little bit of glare from the sun. Sorry. Just insane. 60 miles an hour almost on these cliffside roads. Just nuts. <laughs> All right, so we have arrived, came down this little teeny driveway off of the main road for two and a half miles. It loops up there through the trees, two and a half miles plus off of the main road to our little driveway, to our little mountain getaway for the weekend. And guess what? My friend is with us. There it is, just sitting there looking pretty. Kind of blends in with this driveway, doesn't it? Uh, there is the Airbnb host's main house in the woods there, so I'm not too far from other people in case this gets weird. But uh, this is a great angle, by the way. This tilted drive, it makes this thing look great. Anyway, pretty car. Let's check out the numbers here. Um, I think I'm about 218 some miles, I think. 216 miles, 58 kilowatt hours, 267 watt hours per mile average. I got really, really great efficiency. I could have gotten here without charging at all, but again, would have had like 10% or something like that. And in the woods here, there's nowhere to charge. So a wrap up of my uh, 200 plus mile, four hour plus journey, this thing rides super quiet. It is not loud. It's cushiony. It's super comfortable to ride up high with these kind of captain's chairs compared to my Model 3 that I'm used to. My bike is still in the back there, um, but I love the way this new Model feels. This Model Y is four or five months old. It was built in May of 2023. So it's barely broken in, barely any battery degradation. And you can tell the perfect height between car and full-on full-size SUV and just the acceleration and torque of this thing. There's a couple of roads, as you saw, that had passing ability and I took full advantage of that. Now I'm going to take full advantage of the shower in this tree house. Let this car chill for a second before we hop back in it and head to dinner. But for right now, now that is all I've got for you. Please like, subscribe, comment below, and let me know if you've got a Model Y that you took on a fun journey and if you've got any other questions for me. But that is it from here. We will see you and catch you on the next one. And this is the next day, my first day here in West Virginia, um, but I have an update. I was kind of surprised to find three Tesla chargers in Black Waterfall State Park. One, two, three, and my car has been charging for about two and a half, three hours now. It's all free. They are level one chargers, but I'm charging at about, I don't know, eight, nine kilowatts or something like that. Just incredible free energy here in the park. And guess what? I don't have to worry about getting stuck anymore in the middle of the wild and wonderful uh, state of West Virginia. All right, now this is the end. See you later.